welcome to this tutorial about ground game in Terraforming Mars. Ground game is what I like to call the strategy behind gaining points from cities and greenery tiles on the game board. It's one of the biggest point scorers in a lot of multiplayer as well as solo games, and it shapes a great deal of player interaction when you're playing with more people. Let's go over how you score points from cities and greenery tiles before talking in detail about how to try and get the most points from your ground game. Firstly, each greenery tile you own scores you a point at the end of the game. This is in addition to the terraform racing you might have gained when it was placed on the game board if the oxygen wasn't yet maxed at 14%. Secondly, each city scores points, one each, for each adjacent greenery tile, whoever owns it. I've set up a simple situation on the board here. Green's first city is worth two points, since it has two adjacent greeneries, even though this greenery is owned by blue. Green's second city is worth three points. Red's city is worth one point, even though, again, it doesn't own the greenery next to it. Green gains two more points from its greeneries, and blue gains a point from its greenery, despite not having any of its own cities next to that greenery. It's not uncommon for people to score upwards of 30 to 40 points from their ground game, so it's important to understand how to earn loads of points. The first aspect to consider is your choice of corporation. Then we'll move on to supplementary cards that can help you build up your ground game faster and scavenge additional points from the ground game, as well as getting in the way of other people's ground game. Finally, I'll take you through the fundamental layouts of cities and greenery tiles that will make your ground game score more points for less investment. The first decision you have to make in any game of terraforming Mars is which corporation to pick from the two options that you're dealt. You can, of course, play ground game with any corporation, but there are a handful that are simply excellent at playing an extensive, efficient ground game. Perhaps the two best are Tarsus Republic and Ecoline. Starting with Tarsus Republic. This corporation begins the game by playing a city tile for free. This gives you the first claim on territory on the board. In addition, whenever anybody plays a city tile onto Mars, including yourself, you gain an extra mega credit production. Therefore, if you do this with a standard project, you'd gain two mega credit production. You also get a small bonus of three mega credits from building cities yourself, effectively reducing the cost of standard projects for cities to 22 if you have enough mega credits to build the city for full price. It's fairly clear that Tarsus Republic is excellent at building cities and you should aim to build plenty of them early on to increase the amount of mega credits that you get. This will also tend to spur other players into building cities to counter your ground game, which then increases your mega credit production even further. Combine quick and profitable city building via Tarsus Republic's ability with some plant production and spending your mega credits on greenery tiles and you will easily collect a big payoff in points when you come to score the game. Just as Tarsus is excellent at building cities, Ecoline is wonderful for building greenery tiles. Ecoline starts with two plant production, and three plants, and only needs to spend seven plant resources to build each greenery tile. The early game plant production really makes a big difference, and you'll be able to get plenty of greenery tiles onto the game board fairly quickly. If you spend some mega credits on a handful of cities, you'll be able to get a substantial ground game going early. Credicor is another excellent candidate for playing a ground game strategy. It starts with a ton of money, which allows you to get cities down early. In addition, for both cities and greenery tiles, as well as anything else costing more than 20 mega credits, once you've paid for your city or your greenery tile, you'll receive four mega credits back. Effectively, this reduces the cost of cities to 21 mega credits, and the cost of greenery tiles to 19 mega credits. 
when you're placing so many tiles on the board during the course of a game where you play a ground game strategy, this makes a really big difference, and certainly puts Credicore in contention to gain a ton of points from ground game. Helion is also able to have a good crack at playing an effective ground game. They are able to use heat as mega credits, and they start with three heat production. Heat is also relatively easy to come by via heat production on cards and energy production on cards or as a standard project. So Helion can become quite rich in the middle game. Since being rich is fundamental to a good ground game with any corporation, Helion can compete with anybody for this particular strategy. The rest of the corporations can, of course, play get ground game as well as any of these four corporations, but their abilities don't specifically help you with playing ground game. Next, we'll talk about a selection of cards that can be used when you're playing ground game. Now let's talk about three types of card that can help you with your ground game. To start with, there are cards that let you build cities or greenery tiles for fewer mega credits than a standard project, or with additional bonuses on the card. A notable mention is standard technology. This gives you a refund of three mega credits when you purchase a standard project. You'll see how similar this is to Tarsus Republic's ability. It reduces the cost of cities and greenery tiles, letting you expand your ground game more cheaply. Then, there are a handful of cards that let you build cities. Research Outpost is possibly the best, since it is relatively cheap compared to a standard project. And it will reduce the cost of all your future cards by one mega credit. If played early in the game, this can be quite good. The remaining city building cards all require you to lose energy production, and so are only practical in some situations. They do, however, often boost your mega credit production, so if you can play them in the early game, these uh, may help you to become rich. Out of the cards that let you build greenery tiles, Mangrove and Protected Valley are notable for their ability to build greeneries on ocean. This might help you to gain a few extra points from some, from some cities that are next to ocean. The second type of useful card for a ground game strategy are the cards that help you to gain a little extra out of the ground game. These are the tiles that benefit you when cities are played, or that benefit you based on the number of cities in play. Immigrant City can be very useful. Again, it mimics Tarsus Republic's ability, increasing your mega credit production when any city is placed. It does come at a cost of energy and mega credit production, but if played early in the game, you will benefit overall. It also allows you to place a city so that the two mega credit production loss you can see on this card actually comes at only a one mega credit production loss. If you play pets early in the game, this will snare you a bunch of points. Each time a city is built, you will add an animal to the card, which is worth half a point. Notice that pets can't ever be removed from this card. They are safe from predators. In addition, if you have pets, some players might hold off from building their own cities allowing you to expand your ground game into their territory. Zeppelins is a card that almost always makes an appearance in the last few rounds of multiplayer games. It will increase your mega credit production by one for every settled city tile on Mars. It's often used to steal or secure the banker award, but if played in the middle game it will give you almost as much mega credit production towards this award while also giving you a, free, a few turns to make use of the increased mega credit production to improve your ground game as well. Immigration Shuttles is a huge swing card when there's been a lot of ground, ground game played. For every three cities you will gain a point, and you will also increase your mega credit production by five. There are two ways to approach this card. Play it late and benefit from everybody's ground game, or play it early and try to put people off building more cities, city tiles, and expand your own ground game into the spaces they leave out. Martian Rails will also help you to benefit from everybody's ground game. 
it lets you spend an energy once per generation to gain one mega credit for e for each city on Mars. Greenhouses will give you one plant for each city in play. You can play this near the end of the game to be able to place a handful more greenery tiles and gain a few extra points via your ground game. The last type of cards that I'm going to talk about are those that allow you to place a tile on the board that can obstruct and get in the way of your opponent's ground game. It's useful to be aware that these tiles exist so that you can avoid having valuable, efficient spaces for greeneries or cities taken away from you. A lot of the multiplayer game will revolve around trying to protect your ground game from other players or to interfere with their ground game via these cards or via well-placed cities. The most notable of these cards is probably Commercial District. The individual who plays this gains mega credit production and can place the Commercial District on the board, which gains one mega credit per adjacent city. Play this in the middle of three of your opponent's cities and you'll take away a hugely valuable spot for your opponent's greenery, and you'll gain three points for yourself as you do so. Just make sure this doesn't happen to you. The urbanised area similarly lets you place a city adjacent to at least two other city tiles, a location which would be illegal for any other city to be placed without this card. Again, this takes an efficient location away from one of your opponents. The restricted area is notable for its action as well as its ability to place a tile in one of those useful spots. This card lets you spend two mega credits to draw a card, which is which tends to be useful. Land claim and industrial center are simply notable because they are so cheap. Ecological zone, if I can find that. Well I can't. Well, Ecological Zone does similarly. It allows you to gain some extra points via animals as well. There are a handful more of these special tiles, such as the mining areas, but those are often difficult to place in strategic locations. The ones I've shown you are the most relevant to obstruction of other players' ground game. Now let's talk about the formations of cities and greenery tiles that can be used to try and maximise the amount of points that you can get from ground game. We'll start with the simplest structure, here in blue. This just demonstrates a city fully surrounded by greenery. For seven tiles, this gives you 18 points, if you raise the oxygen with each greenery tile. At a cost of 163 mega credits using standard projects only, it gives you 9 mega credits per point. This is an effective way to gain points, however it has downsides, in that other people would be able to build cities around your formation and steal points from your greenery tiles. This is the reason that ground game typically revolves around formations that have cities around the outside. In this way, people are put off building within your structure, since putting greenery tiles there would give you more points than they would gain. The yellow and green formations demonstrate the two major patterns of ground game. Over here in green, this structure of six tiles gives you 12 points if you can raise the oxygen with each greenery tile. The cost in mega credits is 144, giving 12 mega credits per point. This isn't as efficient as other layouts, but there are some benefits to using this formation. It's harder to get in your way, as the three greenery spaces here are less critical than the central greenery in the yellow structure here. Whereas if somebody blocks the middle space in the yellow formation, the structure is massively hampered. If that happens in the green formation, it is a less critical loss. Unfortunately, this structure is difficult to expand, as there are no spaces to build cities directly adjacent to this structure. To expand, you'd need to build a city tile away from the structure and fill in the greeneries in the middle. For an already inefficient formation, this is problematic. This yellow formation of seven tiles gives 17 points if you increase the oxygen with every greenery tile. 
This costs 167 mega credits, giving 10 mega credits per point. However, this structure is relatively easy to screw with. As we've talked about, the central greenery is a promising target for people to build structures there. Having had that stolen away from me in a number of multiplayer games, I would suggest filling it with a greenery earlier rather than later. This structure also benefits from flexibility of expansion. New cities can be built adjacent to any of the outside greenery tiles, like so, giving you two more efficient tiles for extra greenery tiles. Personally, I typically go for the yellow structure, if possible, when playing ground game, unless the board situation in a multiplayer game makes another option more attractive. In a game setting, solo or multiplayer, you are aiming to expand your ground game beyond a single formation into a larger layout, but the foundation of a good ground game will almost always be a structure similar to the yellow or green formation. So this has been a look at ground game in terraforming Mars to maximize your points. Thanks for watching and please comment to let me know what you thought of this video to help me improve the strategy videos in this series.